Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the latest on a Wolf County bus crash that left several students shaken up. And we hear from the son of one of the fallen officers from a deadly Floyd County shooting last summer. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Alrighty, good morning to you. It's Friday and it's six o'clock. It's just six o'clock. Feels later than that. My goodness. Alrighty, I'm Dakota Makris. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our forecast this morning. Yeah, Brandon, I literally thought, oh, it's 630. No, it's not 6 yet. Not yet. We're getting closer. Almost to the finish line. Exactly. <laughs> All right. This morning, not terrible out there, but it is chilly mm -hmm. as we head out the door this morning. Let's go to Lake Cumberland over in Pulaski County right now, and you'll be able to see there uh, kind of bright over that way this morning. Uh, camera's a little bit grainy in the mornings because of where it's dark, but later in the day, this is a beautiful shot, and hopefully you can get some of the, the grandeur of that there this morning, but we always appreciate our friends over at Speeda for giving us access to that and the Somerset camera there, which you can see a little bit better. Oh, they just dropped. Prestonsburg just got into the 30s on air there. They finally lost their 40s, so there you go. Everybody's in the 30s at this point. Uh, some folks getting closer to the 20s. We've got a three-way tie now for the coldest spot. Irvin, Somerset, and Williamsburg all at 32 this morning. A lot of mid to upper 30s out there across the region. So uh, let's go toward a little extra on the coffee meter this morning. This is probably the last time we show this anyway, but let's go more toward a little extra since we're out of the 40s now. If you're grabbing a donut on your way out the door, it's going to be back and forth today. I do think we'll see some clouds at some point, and those will limit our temperatures just a little bit. I still think we get into the low to mid 40s, though, for daytime highs this afternoon. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you. Well, parents in Wolf County had a scare yesterday morning when a bus full of Head Start students were involved in a crash. Our Jordan Mullins talked to some parents whose kids were on that bus. Tracy Keaton, mother of a four-year-old Harper and five-year-old Wyatt, received a message from her children's bus driver on Thursday morning, letting her know that the bus had broken down. I was with two of my co-workers on our way to Ashland to pick up something for work and was in the back seat of the car, you know, and couldn't really get here at that moment. Soon after, Keaton sent her ex-husband and father of her children, Kenny Banks, to pick them up and got a call from the school that she was not expecting. Later, the school actually called and informed me that they had actually been in an accident. When Banks arrived, he saw the bus in a ditch and his children with first responders. Ambulance, police officers, lights everywhere. They had a line of cars of parents. I couldn't see the bus immediately until I started walking up through here. Then I could see it. It was kindly, you know, it wasn't rolled over, but it was in a ditch. Now the parents are reluctant to place their kids back on a bus. When I put my child on this bus, that child's going to arrive at school safely. It's going to have a safe day in that building, and it's going to come back home safely. And right now, this current group, I don't think, can actually reassure us on that. But are glad that no child was seriously hurt in the incident. In Wolf County, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Middle Kentucky CAP Head Start Director Chris Holliday said the cause of the crash is still unknown, and. No kids were seriously injured. All nine kids on the bus were taken from the scene by their parents. Earlier this week, we first told you about a second lawsuit against the McGoffin County School Board and bus driver. Well, we are now taking a deeper look into it. A mother of two students and an 18-year-old student filed the lawsuit on Wednesday. The suit is against the school board, the bus driver, the former and current superintendents, and Fidai Foods, it's the owner of a convenience store where the driver also works, the suit claims driver Wanda Bailey did not have enough rest to safely drive. It claims she worked a late shift at Speedy's in Salyersville the night before, which did not end until midnight or later. She then started her bus route at 615. The Lexington Herald reports the lawyer who filed the lawsuit says a number of students believe she may have fallen asleep at the wheel. The crash happened in November on Kentucky 40. 18 students were on board, all suffered injuries, some critical, including the bus driver. On Thursday, the Floyd County Sheriff's Office displayed two new banners, one recognizing Sheriff John Hunt as the Sheriff of the Year, the other memorializing one of the heroes killed during the Allen ambush last year. William Petrie was named Deputy of the Year for 2022. Our buddy Forbes talked to his son about the end-of-year honor and his lifelong legacy. 
feel like he's, his whole life, he's always tried to help people. And I feel like that's been his main goal. During the Allen ambush last year, William Petrie died a hero. He always wanted to make this place. He always wanted to make Floyd County a better place. Um, and I feel like he, he did that. The firefighter, sheriff's deputy, and retired state trooper is remembered for a lot of things. But father was one of his most important titles. He's pushed me so hard to be such a good person and do what I can. And no, he's always told me that I can do what I want. And I just got to try hard at it. And he's always believed in me. So him being there and doing what he's done really pushes me. Which is why after being recognized as deputy of the year by the Kentucky Sheriff's Association, the department he served wanted to get the award home to the family he loved. I wish he would have been able to see it because uh, I feel like while he was here, he didn't really see how many people truly supported him and truly um, supported police officers around here. But now I see it, my mom sees it. Now with the award in his hands, Chase Petrie says he has big shoes to fill. I probably won't be able to live up to him, but I'm gonna try my best. Living the rest of his years in honor of the Deputy of the Year. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Well, Chase just completed his first semester of college. He's on the president's list and far ahead on his hours thanks to credits he earned in high school. He says it's been hard without his dad, but he plans to keep pushing forward to make his dad proud. Well, meanwhile, one southeastern Kentucky city is looking for the right person to add to its police force. Officials with the city of Everts posted on their Facebook page they are accepting applications and resumes for an interim police chief. The post says the candidate must be police academy trained and the position will start out at $16 per hour. If you're interested, you are encouraged to pick up an application at Everts City Hall Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Well, one East Tennessee jail employee is in hot water with the police in another state. A former Campbell County jail employee is charged with impersonating an officer in Oklahoma. The sheriff's office says 19-year-old Jackson Jones was pulling people over with flashlights. Jones told deputies he works for the Campbell County Sheriff's Office. He was wearing a ballistic vest that said sheriff on the front and was carrying handcuffs. Campbell County officials say Jones no longer works there. A Southern Kentucky woman is facing a list of charges, including attempted murder. 48-year-old Love Phelps is accused of threatening a doctor at Eye Health of Somerset. Pulaski County deputies say she went inside and demanded to see a doctor. When the doctor came out, deputies say she got irate, threatened to kill them, and pointed a pistol towards people in the office. Deputies found her in the parking lot inside of a stolen van. She's facing several charges, including attempted murder, wanton endangerment, burglary, and terroristic threatening. Well, McGoffin County officials are asking for help to identify people who reportedly caused damage to a park. Well, in this video posted to Facebook, several cars were caught driving on Half Mountain Battlefield Community Park. Well, officials said the cars caused damage to the park. If you have any information about this case or notice any suspicious activity, you can call McGoffin County Dispatch at 606-349-4403. Well, across the border in Wayne County, West Virginia, the story is ongoing water problems. Freezing temperatures cause widespread leaks and burst pipes in the Crumb Public Service District system. Chief Field Operator Jesse Allen said they have been able to get water back on in the Crumb area, but most of the outages are still in the Genoa and Hampton Ridge areas. Some customers say 10 days without water is making normally trivial things like taking a shower or washing dishes impossible. So you can see there's no water coming out. There's not even air or anything coming through the lines. Whole pile of dishes haven't been done since the day after Christmas. Genoa Elementary had to close yesterday because of no running water. Superintendent Todd Alexander says Crumb PSD has been working late hours to get the pipes back in working order. Letcher County is one of several Kentucky counties helping to turn the lives around of nonviolent offenders. It's part of Senate Bill 90, which lets inmates with mental or substance abuse disorders get treatment and vocational training. In return, charges are dropped, but one district judge says it goes beyond just helping the individual. You're also going to have to offer some education and support 
to family members who have someone who's suffering from an addiction or mental illness, what services are available, um, what uh, resources are available. Senate Bill 90 passed last year. Senate President Robert Stivers of Manchester and Senator Brandon Storm of London were two of the three co-sponsors. Six ten here on this Friday morning, and thank goodness it's Friday. Whitesburg camera is back online for the moment there on Main Street. So we're taking a look at it this morning. Pretty quiet downtown there. No major issues going on. Temperatures all in the 30s from 32 in Irvine, Somerset, and Williamsburg to 39. Prestonsburg, Pikeville, Harlan, and Jacksboro this morning. Again, up into the mid-40s for daytime highs today with a mix of sun and clouds. Dakota? Brandon, thank you so much. It's almost 6 11 when we come back here on Mountain News this morning. A message in a bottle returns to one Kentucky man more than three decades after tossing it into the ocean off of the Florida coast.